Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, we thank you for this season that we rejoice and celebrate. We thank you for Jesus. Lord, we thank you for each and every person here today that they are here, Lord, to support, recognize, and, and uh, try to govern this, this uh, school board that we work with. Lord, we thank you for all you do for us, and we just ask you to help us all to make decisions based on our hearts and what is right. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Randy Rance. Here. Bo Barton. Here. Melinda Ballard. Here. Aaron Glass. Here. Maria Bass. Here. Gary Castles. Here. Johnny Fallon. Here. All right, item A is the executive committee report. Uh, reviewed all the checks. Everything seems to be in order. Uh, sales taxes were down again this, this period uh, by 7%, a little over 7% compared to this time last year. Uh, we get people shopping at home for the holidays. All right, thank you, Randy. All right, item D is review and vote on approval of the November 9th, 2023 board meeting minutes. Make a motion we accept. Second. Right, all in favor, Sarah? Uh -huh. All right, item C is recognized Terry Gerard as the December employee of the month. Scott Walker. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me again tonight, Ms. Terry. Would you join me up here? When, when we do this employee of the month, uh, we ask for co workers to send in something that they might want to say about the person that's one. And usually we have one or two people that'll, that'll send something in. Ms. Ms. Terry, you had nine different people Aww. send in something about you, and some of the words they used were great attitude, patient, hard worker, professional, organized, smile on her face. Uh, one co-worker summed up your, your attitude by very simply saying this, she is the best. <laughs> and then finally, Terry always has a positive attitude and continually lifts others up. She has a kind soul and is a giving person. She takes care of many tasks that are not in her job description and never complains about a thing. Terry is well loved by her parents at Kelly Early Childhood because they know uh, that she's like a watchdog at the front desk. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have ever tried to get into one of these schools. It's, it's impossible. Nobody is above having to show their ID and sign in, not even the sheriff. <laughs> Miss Terry is a selfless person and helps wherever she sees that someone needs it and doesn't wait for someone to ask for help. Please help me congratulate Miss Terry Gerard. You for the All right, item D is recognize the Caldwell Junior High Student Council. So I told y'all last month we had the high school student council and so we want invited the junior high council to come and speak with you. So if you're here, I'm junior in. high, y'all come on in. <laughs> it's here. Okay. Yeah. All right, good deal. All right. We have a basketball game tonight, yes. so a lot of the kids are there. Yeah. So tell us tell us about your student council and what you do. So we basically represent the classes like in the D. We, uh, we vote on the things that are such as PBIS, AR rewards, um, sometimes how we spend money, mm -hmm. sometimes not, and we also fundraise for the money that we spend. Can you talk about the fundraiser that y'all just did? Because I actually got to be in the meeting when they came up with the idea, and y'all, I was blown away. How many are on the student council? 27. 27 students on the student council, and so I went and, and visited. I had this script of things I was going to talk about. I never opened my mouth <laughs> because they went to, went to town, and I actually saw this idea come. Was it your idea? I thought so. Tell them about it. So it was like November around that, and I realized it was coming up to Christmas, so I realized it would be a good idea to have ornaments. So if you'll open up your Christmas packages, you'll see the ornaments that the Junior High Student Council came up with the idea to sell those as a fundraiser. And what are you raising money for? Uh, the dog ball pit. Oh, a dog ball pit at the school. So, 
Yes. So have you guys had a chance to talk to uh, Ms. Hillstead about the cell phone policy? What do you think about the cell phone policy? <laughs> well, I mean, it's good to some of but I just feel like it does work, but it's really nice. Sounds good. Anything else? Ms. Hillstead, you want to talk a little bit about how the committee... So each homeroom votes on a student committee member, so it's a very diverse group. Um, and they all go back once we have our meeting at club schedule every month. They go and they meet with me and Ms. Watts and we discuss, you know, things that they want at school, um, things they want to see to better our school. And so one of the things that they wanted to do was to put in a permanent Gaga pit. Um, it, that, I don't know if you know what that is, but it is um, like a round pit that's made out of wood and they go in and they play with a ball. It's a church game and they go in and they throw the ball kind of like dodgeball but it's like at their feet and they can play and bring other players back in and so we put up a temporary one and they loved it so much that when we discussed what was our main goal for the year they said we want a permanent dog out pit so and they also helped with um doing the halls that are decorating our halls and they uh, put together treats for the teachers they always want to do something for others and so we've wrote you know kind of notes to the teachers and I just listen to them and find out what they want from this you know from us and to also make part of the decision making at the school so it's, it's great yeah. Yeah. our future leaders we're proud of y'all hey. I love you. how y'all bringing everybody in to see the school too yes oh, yes so we had the preschool yeah. and the head start oh, it was oh, great easier oh. for support <laughs> <laughs> All right, I believe is student cell phone policy update from Ms. Healthfield and Ms. Healthfield. You want me to go first? Um, so once we implemented the new plan um, of the major referral and the contract with the parents, we have only had two cell phone violations all year long, which is amazing. My teachers make sure that they're either, they tell them it's either turned off or in your backpack, or if they don't trust themselves, they can put it in the cell jail in class. They're not allowed to put their, bring their cell phone to the bathroom with them. And so just having everybody on board has helped tremendously with it. And we told the students from the beginning that this was, a, this could be a temporary situation that you know, further action could be taken. So we wanted to make sure if you wanted to keep your cell phones available for you for extracurriculars, then we needed to do what we needed to do to keep it that in place. So it's been really successful. Everybody has pretty much bought into it? Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you have anybody that kind of like refused to give up the phone? Nothing yet? Students was? Mm -hmm. mm, I mean, I have in the past. Um, we we just, have just recently. maybe maybe one of the two, no but nothing. When they came to the office and we explained the policy and had the parent come in and meet and discuss okay. the contract, we haven't had any other okay. issues. Okay. That's, that's kind of what I'm mm -hmm. worried about. Okay, if it's working, yep. Yeah. We just need to amend and move it to whenever. Let it be in full effect. It's like you know, ours is um, it's it's been better. We have more referrals than you do but um what i like about it is that the policy is current mm -hmm. so i think because it's so current the teachers feel like that everything is on there like airpods cell phones mm -hmm. it wasn't outdated so they feel like it's enforceable because you can say um this was just passed and you know that we're going to be supported uh, when we have to take a phone or something like that so um we appreciate having a policy that can be enforced and the teachers feel like they have the right to say hey this just passed, you know, they take the phone and listen to the office. So um, it's been success. We have, we have more referrals than you, but I think it's because teachers are aware. And before they were just, you know, like last year, and before they were just kind of, I think, looking over it. Mm -hmm. And now that they know it's being enforced, that they're enforcing it. So we haven't had very many repeat offenders once they have it taken. Um, they're like, you know, they know the second one, they have to sign the contract that says if I get taken again, it's a 20 day lock up. <coughs> no other option. So because of that, they're like, oh, so we haven't had any repeat offenders. So 
it's, it's been working well. I've been happy with it. Nick, I think as a result of that, but based on what we talked about earlier today with AI and all that, probably March, April, May, we'll look at it again to stay current with what technology is so we can kind of, since yeah. you're saying that, since it's current, it, it appears to be working better, mm -hmm. uh, especially at you guys' school, which is the hope that we had. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's not on the agenda. I don't think we have to, because we said until December, mm -hmm. but I think it should be retroactive to continue to move forward. So I don't think we have to do anything tonight. Mm -hmm. But uh, congratulations on because I didn't, I thought it would be a, more of a problem, mm -hmm. but since it's not, I'm glad that you guys are able to mm -hmm. you know, work on it, but you don't need us to tell you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right, item F is review and vote on timber sale. David? Okay. I think we kind of batted around a little bit already on over the uh, tax and where I sent you the information, so y'all wouldn't just now have to see. Uh, there's only one bid that we have to worry about. The other bid is not related to wash talk, uh, it's not related to call up at all. So the only bid that is relevant is item one. Uh, it's for a section of land that's in wash talk parish that we share with them. And uh, the minimum bid they were requiring was 985000 They got a bid of $987,098.87. I don't know quite know why they did this one that, but they did. So, uh, so uh, I mean, it's up to y'all to vote in favor or against it. Uh, and I think y'all saw that they will be replanning. They're going to hold out $200,000 for escrow purposes and whatever the difference is after that uh, replanning takes place, they'll pay us, you know, 50-50 split. Uh, you know, they're obviously going to hold it out more than they probably expect to pay out. So, you know, we'll get another check probably three years from now. So, so David, to make sure I get this right, part of this property is out, right? None of the property is in Caldwell Parish. The township which is 36, uh, 30, uh, 6 square miles, 36 sections. Part of that township is in our parish, part of it is in their parish. The section 16 itself is in Washita. So, uh, and any time you have a township that crosses boundaries, mm -hmm. you split the revenue based on how many uh, sections of land are in each parish. So, in case, it's kind of somebody else is basically bidding mm -hmm. whatever for us. I guess what I'm saying is I would feel more comfortable if we had somebody like Randa Garrett that was involved on a day-to-day -day basis talking with these people. I just, I'm well, uncomfortable I mean, with somebody else yeah, doing no, something I mean, folks. Uh, we advertise in the Washington, Washington mm -hmm. advertised in their paper, I, I think it's Citizen up there. And so, I mean, it's open for bid on whoever wants to bid. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah, I actually talked to the forester, one of the foresters that cruises, cruises in the and they told me that they came back to Washington and told them to, on this particular section to um, have a minimum bid of 800000 Yeah. So for it to come in at nine, of course, but then again he said Washington would take our advice, they put it at 985000 And uh, they came back even higher than that, so I, I, I would feel pretty comfortable with that. Because I know yeah. David May was real familiar with mm -hmm. all of his property. Mm -hmm. yeah. And he and I, at some point, have talked about it, and his concern was that we get the most that we could get right. rather than somebody else <laughs> doing it for us. I just have an issue with us not having any conversation other than accepting right. what somebody's given me. I just don't subscribe to that type of yeah. you know, behavior. But I, if, if you guys feel that it's fair, I'm, I'm okay with it. Just judging by the people I've talked to, I would think it would be we're getting about 1,500 an acre. That's pretty good for what Tim is going for. And the budget is that we adopted back in September, that was at 300,000. And that was a little conservative, and that was based on Washita saying, you know, if you split 300, it, it might be more. So it'd be a split. Right. So we're looking closer to 368,000, assuming all the numbers hold. So. I'll make a motion to accept. Yeah. I second. Well, all in favor? Uh, thank you, David. Yes, sir. Uh, item G is accountability update. Ms. Dixon. Okay. Um, she has 
on the screen for you too. Okay. But you should have a copy. No, you may want to visit me. Yeah. You should have a copy in your folder of the slides. There are like two on each page. Um, basically, the first slide, um, we're just looking at kind of comparing. We have our 2023 SPS scores for all the schools in their letter grade. Um, and then on there, we have what we had in 2022. Um, so we're looking at um, the high school was a 96.1 in 22, and there were 96.5 in 23. So that was um, four tenths of an increase. Um, the junior high went from a 65 to a 68.3, so they grew 3.3 3 points. And then we saw some decrease in the elementary school. Um, Columbia went from an 80.5 to a 73.4. Grayson went from a 63.7 to a 59.5. And Union went from a 58.5 to a 54.3. But overall, the district grew um, 0.2 points from a 79.8 to an 80. Um, and, you know, scores are getting later and later. Used to, we'd have scores by October 1st, and now it's later in November before we're even getting anything. So hopefully that trend will go back. Um, any questions on those? I, I got a question, Tristan. So it, it's a constant occurring thing, and it was when I was here. What factors? I mean, I, I, I know our elementary teachers do a great job. I know our junior high teachers do a great job. And I know our high school teachers do a great job. So, but we jump from D's and C's to A. So what are we doing at the high school? I mean, is there extra things going yes. on that, yes. that to benefit the You're, scores that Katie doesn't have and that our elementary principals don't have? There's a lot more at the high school that we need. So we have a benefit of being able to go So the high school has, I mean, high school kids have so much they have to go into it. Like the elementary is, you're looking at your um, assessment index, which is LEAP, uh -huh. um, and a growth, kind of a, um, oh, um, like a progress, I was thinking growth, you have a progress grade for kids that show growth within, um, from one year to the next. So that's the only thing they have other than now we have interest and opportunities, which is only 5%. So they're working with basic test scores. Um, when you get to the junior high, you have test scores plus DCAI, which is by the time a kid ends their ninth grade year, how many credits do they earn? And so if they have six or more credits, they get the full points. And so they have that that goes into theirs. But when you get to high school, you have assessment, you have progress, you have ACT index, which includes ACT and work keys. You have the strength of diploma index, which includes um, how kids graduate. Do they graduate with a basic diploma? Do they graduate with a diploma plus a credential? Do they pass a CLEP test? They get all of those points. And then we also have a cohort graduation rate, how many kids graduated that started the ninth grade. And so the high school has a lot of that that goes into their score that pulls the assessment up. I wouldn't necessarily want to post this, but in my mind, or Nikki, I would like to see what our high school scores are. We're going to show you in a minute. Before you are, yeah, yeah. before we get to that, because mm -hmm. it's a constant. These ladies down there at that elementary, mm -hmm. I know what they're doing down there. They're working their tails off. And it gets, and you see these numbers, and it looks like mm -hmm. something's going on here. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's not fair to them. It's just the way the state set up the yeah, accountability system. The, the elementaries just don't have a lot to work with. They have basically <coughs> assessment, and that's it. Um, on the next slide, um, basically it's just notes, kind of a synopsis of all of that. Uh, again, we grew <coughs> as a district, 0.2 points. Um, the high school was an A for the sixth consecutive year, but they were also recognized as an equity honoree, meaning they're subgroups. Um, students with disabilities, um, students you know broken down by race, students uh, economically disadvantaged, their subgroups grew, so they were an excellent honor. Um, CBHS showed growth in ACT index, strength of diploma, and the cohort grad rate. We went up in that um, for that year. The junior high, like we said, grew 3.3 points, and overall, even though they grew, um, they remain in that comprehensive intervention um, required CIR for their subgroup performance. So their subgroups in students with disabilities and African Americans um, were still a little low. 
Um, but that qualifies them for funding because they are a CIR school, they get extra funding to help their um, efforts to try to improve. Same thing for Union Central, they remain in CIR, but again, we also get funding for that to continue their improvement efforts and to try to grow. The next page is what you're talking about. Um, but we're looking at, this basically takes everybody in the Northeast Louisiana region, kind of our region, Region 8, and compares us with where everybody falls. So when you look at Colwell Parish, um, you see where, you know, West, West Carroll and Washita, they flip flop back and forth. The, um, they're usually above us. But we're usually, I know for the past four or five years, we've been number three when you look at our whole region. Um, and when you look at what's pink, what's pink is those districts that are ahead of us. Um, so one of the main things that we have to work on is progress. Um, and I know the schools have already started that work because they're, they're choosing priority students, students that they see that they need to move from approaching basic to basic and from basic to mastery, um, that they can get there. And so that's something that we've already started to work on. But when you look across, you see the high school, from that high school index across, all of that's high school scores, just on the high school. So from the high school assessment index, their progress index, you see the ACT, strength of diploma, cohort grad rate, and the uh, graduation rate. All of that goes into the high school score. Whereas when you look at the elementaries, you're back here on K-8 assessment and K-8 progress. And then the junior high gets DCAI. So she called out the pink. That, that's where, and that's where we're looking is who's, who's outperforming us in, in those areas, and so we highlight those pink. But if you flip that, all the white means we're outperforming. We're outperforming. So, I mean, it's different ways to look at the data, and, and you don't really know until you start comparing to other, you know, places. How are we performing? And, and, and our work is we've got to work on progress for K-8. High school assessment index, which is the high school leap test, and then the high school progress index. Those are the real areas we've got to focus on. But if you look at K-8 as far as assessment, I mean, we're holding our own, you know, up there at the top. Um, and the high school on ACT, um, we only had two districts that were above us in the ACT index. Um, strength of diploma, we're killing it. Um, and then our cohort, cohort graduation rate, we only have one district that beat us in that. So basically, we are putting out students at the high school that are leaving with dual enrollment hours, CLEP tests that give them college credit, and certifications that they can use to, you know, get a job, further themselves. Um, so, you know, the high school is hitting all those marks. We just got to get assessment done. Any questions on that page? How much does the, does the cohort graduation rate index affect our school? Because we're, so we're beating people by 50 mm -hmm. and yeah, some it's, by 60. It's, it's 25 percent. What are we doing that they're not? They are not um, either graduating students on time or getting them the extra Credentials, the you know, a regular stuff. diploma is worth 100 points. Yeah, a regular right? diploma is 100. But then anytime you go up from that, say we get a kid certified in EMR, that's a statewide credential, and we get 110. If I was some of these other parishes, I'd be calling you on that. They do. <laughs> <laughs> Regularly. Christy's the guru. <laughs> they do. Um, but you know, and then say they get a dual enrollment credit in a core class, plus they get a statewide certification, and they're 115. If we can get them to pass a club test, they're 150. Mm -hmm. And so, um, for one year we have 15 club tests. Um, so you have 15 so kids who graduated with, with an extra 50 people. points tagged on. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a good deal. Mm -hmm. um, and then the last scale, it's kind of like the boom boom boom. <laughs> <laughs> um, this, our SPS letter grade scale was supposed to change in 22, but because of COVID and everything that happened and everybody getting back in the room of taking tests and getting scores back up, they pushed it back. So the new SPS letter grade shift will be this year with 24 scores. 
Um, and you see that we'll have to have a 95 to have an A, an 80 to have a B, a 65 to have a C, and a 50 to have a B. So five points. It basically shifted five points. In. The target's moving. Yeah, our target's moving. What was the reason for that? We're supposed to get to 100, by 150 by 2025. Those, those shifts were planned back yeah, in what yeah. year? Oh gosh, that's been a long time. Mm -hmm. they basically, because it was 2016, yeah. yeah was back in 2016, they passed this long term, mm -hmm. you know, we're going to do this and then we're going to up the ante here, we're going to up the ante here. And because of COVID, they shifted, shifted it, it back. back. Um, what is the progress index on the K-8? <laughs> Exactly. Basically, they take the kids' scores, um, say they look at their third grade English score, how close is that kid to mastery by eighth grade? And so they move that, you know, this kid should grow this many points every year. And so if a student meets their growth target, then you get so many points in the progress index. If they don't meet their growth target, then they put them in a pool with their peers. Um, and basically, if the peers meet the growth target, I think basically is how it is, then they get points for that. So it's basically how do they grow each year because mastery is the goal. Right. And so for elementary, we're looking toward eighth grade, and then for high school, we're looking toward the, you know, the EFCs and all the tests that they take. Over. So they have so to It is individualized. Basically. Yeah. And, and it's a good thing. It's yeah. only 25% of elementary and junior high scores. But it does give you, so you may have a kid who can't get to basic and get an 80, you only get 80 points for basic anyway. You don't get 100 <coughs> points to get to mastery. But you may have a kid who can't get to basic and so you're taking a zero there. But if they did grow and meet their target, then you do get points for that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's helping any growth. growth. Yeah. Any growth any for growth. any student. And so at, at that point, we just kind of you know, tie into what we're going to talk about. That's why we have priority <coughs> students, and we identify kids who are very close to the next level, and we really hone in on what can we do to, to help grow these kids at each school. Good question. Anything else? Same, thing. Because I want to, I want to lead into the next, the next part. Because what I, I, I want to make sure that you as board members and that you as public know that we're not at a place we want to stay. We, we're, we're, we're proud of the growth that we have made, but we're also concerned about the places where we didn't grow. And so I want you to know where we are moving forward, that we're not sitting back and just letting this take place. Um, every school has written an action plan based on their growth. And you actually have copies of those action plans in a separate folder under your folder? No. No? no. Okay, didn't go. <laughs> we dropped that one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you have an action plan. Yeah, that looks like this for every school that's going to be communicated. And um, so with that action plan, they're all aligned to our district initiatives. And so I wanted to remind you, you know, of our district initiatives. We wrote our district strategic plan. Um, we're in year three of it, right? Mm -hmm. yep. And so those um, those initiatives are are embedded in everything we do. It's it's all a part of these action plans. It's a part of surveys that we have just sent out to teachers to to gauge how we are doing with these initiatives. And so we took the initiatives and said, how can this initiative help me raise my test scores? How can it help me grow my SPS? And so the first one is equitable access to high quality instruction. And what we as a district have decided is we need to shift what we call the cognitive lift to our students. We know that we have the right curriculum in place. We know we have assessments in place. We've got to help our kids do the thinking. And how can they do the, the math? How can they do the math so that they're actually able to problem solve when I get on that test? And that's not good English. When I take the test, um, how am I able to problem solve because my teacher has, has helped me throughout the year? And so there's a focus on shifting the cognitive lift to the students so that they're doing the, the thinking. The second one is how do we engage our families and community members? 
And so how's that going to improve our, our school performance score? Well, we've got to engage stakeholders. We've got to engage our parents. And so they've got some activities they're going to talk about for a little bit on how they're going to try to engage parents. Um, another, you know, that we've got to do is we've got to engage students in setting their own goals so that the students take ownership for our learning. And so we've, um, we're, we're talking with students, we're meeting with students, and we're saying, how do you know what kind of work you're doing in class? You know, do you know what you're going to score and how do you know? And so that they're setting goals and taking some ownership for their own learning. Am I doing mastery level work or is the work I'm doing approaching basic? And how do I get from approaching basic to basic? Or how do I get from basic to mastery? So that's um, our second initiative. The third is diverse and talented team. Social emotional wellness of, of our teachers and how do we make the teachers feel like they're a part of a school team? And so our, how's that going to impact your test scores? Well, if we provide knowledge and skills to teachers and our paraprofessionals and support them in implementing their efforts, then that's going to translate into improved test scores because the teachers are supported in the right things. And then how do we celebrate those successes, the big ones and the little ones with our teachers so that they know that they're on the right track and that they feel like they have a, a supportive leadership team? And then the last initiative is on social emotional supports for our students and, and, and a lot of people don't understand why it's important for us to care about our kids and their social emotional well-being. Well, if they're not in class, they're not learning. And so we've got to have strategies in place where we're helping our kids <coughs> stay in class. And so we've, we've implemented some restorative practices with Miss Meredith's team so that we can increase that time and then also just every student so they feel like they belong they feel like teachers care about them that their leaders care about them and when they know their teachers care about them and love them and support them then they work harder because they believe in, in themselves so um, I would like for you know to take a few minutes to allow if, if that's okay with y'all for the principals since they're here if you have any questions I think that, you know, they've got some real plans in place that they kind of want to highlight for you. Do you want to just let them talk or do you want to ask questions? They're ready. They're ready. They're ready to tell you how they're going to move forward. Well, you're moving forward with these plans? Yes. These action plans. These action plans. That's what, that's what Y'all looked at all this and y'all decided how y'all are going to move forward. They wrote them. We did not write them for them. Yeah. Okay. We met last Monday. Last Monday, Ms. Wells sat down with them and we all, we, we realized we have been figuring out their test scores for them. And so we, we sat down and gave them, she gave them and taught them how to actually plug in the numbers and see how those scores impact this letter grade. And so the morning was spent with her figuring it out and then the afternoon was spent writing an action plan for how I as a leader am going to grow my school. And that's what you have is that final product. Nigga, you, know, you guys were invited here specifically, specifically to do that. So, I mean, just go on and tell us what your action plan is to make sure that the public is aware that you guys know exactly where we're at. You're doing everything that you guys need to do. You need the parents to buy into this because you need parent participation and all those other things. So the, the teamwork that's already been established, you guys are already bored, and you're just here tonight to give us the input so we can be able to relay this information out to everybody else. And I don't want nobody thinking I'm sick or crazy because I'm not asking the question that I usually ask, but I've already met with you guys, and I'm very satisfied with what you have told me with the uh, principals and the directors. I appreciate the superintendent arranging that because I wanted to know specifically uh, where we were at and what we were doing to get to another place, and I'm very satisfied with what you told me, and I think it's only fair that the board take it upon themselves to do what I did, which is come and talk to you guys. I think you, you today you indicated that you want to invite board members to the school so they can ask and do whatever it is that they want to do because we all need to know what's going on so that information can be given to those who deserve it, which is the public and the kids. So I think we have a plan, we have an action, uh, we have action, and we have something that we can execute. And speaking for me, I'm satisfied with everything that uh, you guys told me to date. Feel like the two-minute version. Yeah. Three-minute version. <laughs> two, two to three-minute version, and you, how about we start from uh, K and move our way up to high school? Does that sound good? Okay. All right. So, Miss Smith. 
Yes, so I am the principal of the K1 You got to stand up like um, a student. So I am the principal of the K1 building, and so I do invite any of you to come and see any of the things that we are about to talk about. Um, we're used to different people. The teachers are used to different people coming in the classroom, so it will not be a shocker to them. Um, but just some of the things that I wanted to talk about, and we have a new curriculum this year, and the curriculum we've had in the past has not been a lot of literacy, a lot of phonics skills, so I feel like with the K-1 students, where they're going to get that great phonics foundation, um, so we have a phonics supplement called Hegarty, and it's all about movement and um, where they're able to break words apart. So new curriculum definitely is going to help. The teachers are loving the new curriculum. Mm -hmm. At first, of course, they were worried because it wasn't like the old one. But once they got into it and started teaching it, I think we have a huge buy-in and they're really seeing students progressing faster this year than they ever have before. Um, Mr. Glass talked today about the difference in an interventionist and an integrationist. And I know he was yeah, like, yeah. I don't even know. And I don't so think nobody talk, else will know. Yes. <laughs> so I want to talk to, about that a little bit because. And tell them what they do. I will. Yeah. And so the interventionist is works with students. And so basically at the beginning of the year, they take them a literacy assessment um, called Dibbles. And any student that is not benchmarked which means, you know, where they're supposed to be when they enter school. They are um, put in a pod of students, or a pod, and they are worked with on their skills that they have not benchmarked on or they have not made progress on. And so this is a small group. And so she pulls them, she works with them, she progress monitors them, and then we have a test three times a year. And so she works with students. She even coaches some of our teachers on phonics skills and how to teach those. So not only is she benefiting the students, she's benefiting some of our new teachers. Then we have an integrationist. Our integrationist is more like our teacher's coach, like a lead teacher, somebody that goes in the classroom, they do model lessons for the teachers, they give in the moment feedback, like if they're in the moment, you know, teaching and they're struggling in a content area, they may, you know, go in and just sit and observe, take notes. They do coaching cycles where it's a three-week cycle where they go in, they observe, they try to figure out what the teacher needs the most help on, they give feedback, they implement the teacher feed, implements that, and they go back and give more feedback. So that's like a three-week cycle. Um, so that's the difference in the two, and I, we could not do it without them. Um, and I know Ms. Furio comes in, and she's a huge part of our intervention piece. And what she does is she comes in and we look at our data after we do the progress monitoring and we say, okay, is this a whole school problem? Are all of the first grade students struggling with this? Is this a class problem or just the students in this class? Or is it a student problem? And when we do that, we can really pinpoint like what areas we need to work on. And so she does that a lot. And so that's what our um, interventionists do. But we have a lot of things going on that we do newsletter talking about like the teachers and having the shout outs and things like that and helping them you know understand their data and understand where they are as far as their teaching skills and providing them more feedback the data dives this year where we just go in and we sit down with extra student work they bring their tests in and this has been some aha moments where they bring their tests in and a pod of teachers that's planning and they're like, oh, my student really struggled on number three, I wonder why, you know? And so really talking specifically about their content that they're teaching and why their students struggled. Oh, I explained it this way. Oh, I didn't think about giving that example. And so the teachers are actually sitting there with the coach um, and talking about where their misconceptions are, where the students are misunderstanding. And so we have a lot of great things that, you know, that we're implementing this year. We have an accelerate time where it's 30 minutes in our pods. When I say pods, it's a three classes. They are sectioned into low, middle, and high. And each teacher, we did it where, you know, each teacher took the content area that they felt more comfortable with and working with those students. They do it for 30 minutes. It's a stop and drop with their pod. Nothing else is going on but what those students need to work on. 
and we're seeing great progress. And I'm seeing great conversations in the hall. Hey, your student, da da da, he is really doing well. We may need to move him up, you know, in another, you know, section. And so we have a lot of great intentional things going on now. And, and Kim, as a director, that's something that you co-sign and buy into supporting uh, with regards to getting from where we are to where we need to be. That's something that you all, all you guys work together on Absolutely. and feel like it's, it's showing a positive benefit. I get to pop in on these common plannings and uh, they're amazing. And just to hear the conversation and the collaboration between the teachers and just like she said, those aha moments, oh, well, I must not have taught that very effectively because my students didn't perform, so tell me what you did. You know, we're not telling them anything. They're coming to, they're reflecting and coming to their own conclusions on what the actions they need to take. And it's yes. open line of communication mm -hmm. between press work. Okay. And then it's all uh, integration is, uh, those are the Title I integration. They use their Title I funds and they, uh, and so it's good for a teacher in the classroom, it's a teacher teaching other teachers. And, uh, so that's something that we need. So Ms. Yeah, and Ms. Wiley's program pays for those teacher coaches, the integrations. She does. So you feel like it's money well spent? Well, <laughs> well, and the reason why I'm asking is, again, marketing campaign, because it seems to be that some people don't understand, you know, what we're doing and why we're doing it. And I think when we have the opportunity to explain what it is we're doing and why we're doing it and how it's benefiting your kid, I think that's when we should seize the moment, which is in this public forum, to make sure that everybody understands that even though we may be where we're at, it's not like we, we're comfortable being here. It's not like we want to be here. So we do have plans put in place to move forward. So I, I just like to clear the air with the misconceptions that often float around with street committees. <coughs> And to piggyback off of that, um, you know, the elementary level doesn't have an assistant principal, and so we kind of deal with everything, and so there's no way to effectively run the building and take care of 19 teachers in a day's time if we didn't have that person there to come divide and conquer. In my building, second and third grade, we don't have a lot of behavior issues, so I'm not tied up doing that. Um, so I am able to be in the classrooms a lot more, but there's no way I can effectively be in 18 classrooms. Um, every day, all day, you know, I... You can? <laughs> <laughs> you know, if I skip this minute, <laughs> I do want to start by saying, you know, when we got the numbers and I sat down with Miss McCann and, and, and she slid it to me and I saw the red, I just went, and it didn't feel good, but um, I took a moment to feel the feeling of, oh my gosh, you know, poor me, and then I thought, mm -mm, we've got to do something about this, and so, um, after we did our walk and talk, I mean, I, my wheels started turning and I immediately started thinking, okay, what can I do to fix this? Like, this, this is not okay. I did expect to take a little bit of a dip um, with new administration. New, we had several new teachers last year, some brand new teachers in those uh, tested grades. I did expect to take a dip, but, you know, still it doesn't feel good. And so, um, before we, we were asked to write an action plan, I already had my action plan going. And so it was, it was easy to kind of fill in the, the graphic that we did because I'd already started working on some things. Ms. Baker, which is my integrationist, she and I met the following week and I, I just said we've got to get our wheels turning and um, it took us a week to kind of put our thoughts together. And so our, our main focus, I think, for second and third grade should be on literacy um, because we haven't had that strong uh, literacy curriculum in the past. Our students are very, very weak in that area. Therefore, they struggle in all areas. And when we asked the teachers, you know, after we started, my wheel started turning, I started asking the teachers so that we could have their buy-in on what their take on all this was. You know, even the math teachers were like, they just can't read. You know, third grade math problems are word problems. They can't read. It's, it's not that they can't compute the math, it's that they can't read. And so that's kind of where the literacy push for us started and my wheels started turning there. So I said, well, how do, we, how do we fix that? And so, you know, the new curriculum that Ms. Smith talked about is amazing and wonderful. We're still gonna have a gap until we've got those third grade students um, that have come through CKLA and the Hegarty. 
Um, so we're still going to have a little bit of, of extra work there to do to try to catch those kids up and close that black gap more quickly. But we implemented um, Accelerate Time. We call it Win Time, which is whatever I need. And the second grade are doing it for an hour a day. Third grade are doing it for 30 minutes a day. And then any other minute that they can fit in. I had one teacher, she's doing it 10 minutes between one, uh, the end of one session and lunch. And um, they're being very intentional with that. Uh, very prescriptive work. We're using the data that we get from ANET, Zern, and um, Dibbles to give the students whatever they need. And it's very prescriptive to that specific student. Student third grade teachers, they split the students, like, hey, I'm taking this one because they need this, you take that one, and they are working with that. I also ask the teachers um, coming back from Christmas break to add that to their lesson plans so that um, when I'm in there, I can help a little bit, you know, this factor can help a little bit um, to give the kids whatever they need. So. That's working really well. We did a push. Some of the teachers were like, oh, we've got time. I'm like, let's make time and see how it goes. And the, the week following that, we talked about, um, you know, how did it work? Just tell me how it went. Tell me how I can help. And they were like, oh, my gosh, it's amazing. So the teachers, after they made it happen, they just forced it to happen, they realized, oh, wow, this is amazing. So um, they're really being very intentional and prescriptive. It's not just time to catch up on the test. It's not just time to uh, work on extra work. It's not just, okay, you did all your work, now you get game time. It's very prescriptive to that student. So your higher level students, they're being given higher level work, work that, that meets their needs. Your lower level students are given work specifically on their weaknesses to help catch them up. So those lower level students are getting that time every day. They're getting the time with our reading interventionist every single day. They're also getting small group time with their teacher. So at a very minimum, they're getting about an hour to even possibly an hour and a half of very intentional time on their biggest points. Um, and so we're hoping, we're hoping, and, and we're already seeing good results from that. And we've only been doing it two weeks now. Very, we've been doing it very intentional too. It's the first week they were like, eh, what do we do? And so we got them rolling really well. Uh, I, I met with every teacher individually last week and every teacher had great feedback from it. So, um, we also are very intentionally placing the paras in certain classrooms based off of specific student needs. We've got some classrooms that have a um, higher number of students with more uh, intense needs, and so we ask the teachers, where do you want a para? Where could you use a para the most? And we redid the para schedules to fit those needs. Um, those, again, are based off of, we use the data to drive what we work with the kids on while the paras are in there. Um, we started, we opened our library back up. We started doing the library once a week. The kids were so excited that they got to take a book home and check the book out. And so it was, it was really fun to see the kids go in there and get, be excited about books, getting books in their hands. And I said, hey, if it works really well and they're just reading, 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 we'll do it two days a week. Um, and with that, the library, we also revamped our AR schedule so that when the student meets their AR goal, they get rewarded immediately. So we don't, in the past, we waited till the end of the nine weeks to reward. Um, now, when they meet their AR goal, they take a test that gives them that goal. When they meet their AR goal, they get rewarded then for every three points, two and a half points for the second graders. So for every three points above that, they get another treat, another treat, and then at the end of the nine weeks, everybody that's met their goal gets the big prize. Um, so the, the first, the third nine weeks, we're doing Wacky Pack Wednesdays for the big prize, and then the fourth nine weeks, we're going to do a picnic in the park for the prize, where we all walk to the park. So mm -hmm. stuff that the kids have said that they wanted um, is what we're rewarding them with. I developed a literacy leadership team. To, to work with me alongside my regular school level leadership team. The district, uh, the, the literacy leadership team, there's two ladies that are very well versed in um, literacy and they are also, um, they love just digging. And so they're helping me gather materials right now on what does master level work look like, what does basic level work look like so that we can put that before the students. Um, to bring the parents in, we're sending home the passages weekly. That's mandatory. It was just whatever the teacher was doing it now. I'm like, 
Everybody send it home every week with a note that lets the parents know, hey, this is for extra practice. Shouldn't only take two minutes of your night, um, but just let your child practice reading to you every single night. Um, and then um, I also, it's my last point, um, Ms. Baker and I, to tackle all of the pieces, like we just decided to divide and conquer our time. So she now spends her mornings in the classrooms with the new teachers, the brand new teachers. I've got several, three, straight out of college. Um, so instead of just kind of letting them figure things out as they go, um, I put her in there and she bounces between the young little morning and just tries to help them figure out like what does high quality instruction look like. She's model teaching. She's helping them figure out what grouping would look like, what proper grouping should look like, helping them figure out how to meet the SPED students' needs, what that looks like, how to uh, scale it back if you've got a child on a kindergarten level but in a third grade class, you know, how do you still teach that child alongside teaching your other students? So she's in there working with them while I'm working with the more experienced teachers. So I can kind of bounce between more of them for less time. So I probably took more than three minutes. But. <laughs> and Ms. Gilchrist, I think we've discussed today that each one of you guys got something in place where if you recognized a weak teacher, you're able to go in put measures in place to try to, you know, build that up. We are, we're doing the same coaching cycle that Ms. Smith talked mm -hmm. about, um, and the teachers are aware right. of the coaching cycle, and, and it's not a, I got you, it's a, right. I got you. Mm -hmm. And we're just doing this because we want to refine your right. skills as a teacher, weak right. or, or strong. And that coaching cycle was um, Charlie Amos from the high school mm -hmm. did this with mm -hmm. all of our principals and mm -hmm. instructional coaches so that they could um, implement what he was doing at the high school because he was seeing such, such success with it. So how do the teachers, how do the teachers, uh, do you have any feedback as far as the teachers, the coaches coming in and working with the, the teachers? The surveys are due how tomorrow. How do the teachers react yeah. to that? Well? The surveys are due tomorrow and that is a question on the survey is, um, you know, do you get, how many observations have you received? Do you get feedback from your school leaders? Does the, does the feedback um, help you improve your practice? Does anybody follow up with you? Is there anything else you want to tell us? So I'm anxious for this um, to be in tomorrow so that we can look at that results. So I'm, um, I'm hopeful that it's positive. And if, if we've got some, some feedback that we need to work on, then we'll tweak and make some adjustments there. But we want teachers to feel supported and, and, and feel like they've got people behind them trying to help them. We'll see, and I'll give the, I'll, I'll share all that with y'all when I get it. Okay, so I'm well, let me ask, let me ask yeah. you one more thing. As far as the you know the teachers themselves and the goals that they set, <coughs> I'm not really a big advocate. I was testing the young people, but um, not I know it's something that we have to live with. But it seems to me that <coughs> in a lot of ways we're trying to make teachers be these cookie cutters. And everybody teach exactly the same, and the teacher itself can't express their own individuality in their teacher. Mm -hmm. And through the years, I always thought individuality in teaching was a good thing mm -hmm. to have that. Mm -hmm. But now it looks like the only way we can teach is you do it this way, this way, and this way, or you're not going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And I don't. Is that is that is that just something that that we have to learn to live with because of the state department? Or is that something that we can work with within our own I think system that the State Department to let them have their individual? They give us the curriculum. And of course, we've been through a let's read it like it says and teach it. The word was fidelity. Do it with fidelity. Now we've moved from the fidelity because, yeah, it felt very cooker, cookie cutter like. And so now it's more teach with integrity. So it's, that's where this common planning is is that we come in and we say, okay, as a group of teachers, Let's, let's do this with this activity. Let's do this. I would like to, you know, share this information. Maybe we could do these activities or give these choices to students. So they're planning those activities so that they, and I would think a lot of them do the same thing, but you may have a little twist on the different. Well, so they're I teaching guess. more to the standard mm -hmm. than they are to um, a script. Mm -hmm. You well, know, because every curriculum we have has a script mm -hmm. that anybody could stand up and read, you know. Um, so that's their guide, mm -hmm. um, but it's not, you don't have to follow that 110%. You know, you, you take the standard 
And if, if that script doesn't really meet the needs of that standard, then you tweak and you make that lesson your own. So just like today, we saw campfires mm -hmm. and tents and classrooms and students mm -hmm. sitting around fake mm -hmm. campfires writing. I mean, they are making the lessons their own. But to add, I wanted to add, but, and it's to that exact thing, we walked in all these classrooms at the exact same time, and it was obvious, because I went into the two ELA classes, I was back to back, they were reading the same story, and they were writing with the same goal, which was helping the students learn how to cite evidence from a text. But these two teachers' approaches were totally different. And at first, because we've lived so long in the, everybody do it the same way, I was like, they're not doing it the same way. But then the longer I sat there with the kids, it was obvious that both of the teachers coming at it a totally different way were getting to the same place, which is getting the kids to write. I mean, getting, getting fourth, fifth. Fourth. For, yeah, getting fourth graders to have these conversations about, on page 45, I have found some evidence that supports the claim that so-and-so is strong, because according to the text, I'm not exaggerating, that these are the conversations <laughs> that the kids were having, and which is why I was able to quickly say, you know, to, everybody just carry along, you don't need my opinion on this, you know, keep doing it. So, while the goals are the same with the standards, even today, within 10 minutes, I was able to see two teachers of the same grade do something really different with, with what they were doing. So. And what I've seen, too, is their individual styles, they try to one-up each other. And so they're like, oh, you got a tent in your room? Just wait. <laughs> and this one down here might, you know, do a, a blow up something, you know. So it's, they, they are still able to express themselves mm -hmm. individually. Well, and I walked into a science yeah. lesson. And the science lesson was on um, the, I guess, the properties of water and how. The, and so they were building boats for gingerbread men. And the gingerbread men probably weren't in the curriculum, but it, just because it's Christmas. it's Christmas time, and they were working in groups trying to figure out how to build a boat out of coffee filters, Fruit Loops, and what else? Um, that may have been coffee, if, if I think rubber bands no, or something, to get the gingerbread things. in to float across the water in these little containers that they had. And everybody did it differently. So I knew that that was part of the curriculum standard, but they, they improvised with the gingerbread men. It was so fun. And one thing I can say is I went in to a teacher's room, who's one of our new teachers, and they were teaching a math lesson and then I stayed in there 15 minutes and then I popped in over and she was struggling a little bit but then I popped in over to another teacher who has been there you know several years and taught that curriculum and I was like oh that's good I need to bring that back to this teacher so sometimes us going in as leaders observing we get great ideas from up strong teachers to bring back to other teachers to support them more so that answer your question you answered your question? All right. Okay. So, so I'm listening. It sounds like we're getting away from the teaching the test. It's, you're teaching the standards. And so what we really have to hone in on is we have curriculums that are tier one. Like the state tiers the curriculums because they have to have these components. And then here is the test. So how do we match up what's in the curriculum with what's on the test? to make sure that our kids are prepared for it. So we're not teaching the test, but we're teaching the standard so that they can perform on their own on the test. We want them to be able to apply. Yeah. Um, no matter what is presented. Because yeah. you don't know what reading passage is going to be on the test. But if you're working with passages that are a grade appropriate passages, and you're asking the right questions and the students are doing the thinking and the cognitive lift, then when they get to a passage on the LEAP test, they're not like, oh my God, I've never seen anything. So that's why it's so important that we teach the right curriculum with the right standards. It's just the method, that what you're doing and how you're doing it can be, um, can be your personal, your personality. I am speaking for Miss Lana Gregory. Um, she had a root canal just about an hour ago. <laughs> so she's numb, and uh, so I told her, I said, no problem. Uh, send me your notes, and I will read them for you. Um, so, uh, and I heard her speak today from her heart on this, so I don't want to really read a script, but um, 
she and Miss Rushing, who is her uh, sidekick, literacy integrationist, um, this summer they set out on their schedule. They knew that literacy was their biggest problem, and uh, the students are struggling to read, just like um, the other two ladies said. They can't, they can't perform well in any of the subjects. So um, this summer, um, I don't know if you remember me talking about our intensive intervention piece that we did this summer. Um, they were witness to it, and so they thought, okay, we've got to do something similar uh, throughout the year because it made such an impact. So they spent all summer <laughs> blowing my mind with a schedule, and uh, so that every teacher in their school stops at the same time every day at 3 o'clock, and they provide their accelerate time. And uh, they got with their interventionist, the Sainsbury, and uh, with the new schedule, and they set aside that accelerate time, which consists of students grouped on their level and their needs, like the other two ladies talked about. And then Miss uh, Ainsworth, their interventionist, met with the staff so that they could really fine tune and tailor the needs um, that those students need. And so not only, I'm gonna add a little bit to this, not only did they um, group the students, they grouped their teachers based on the teacher content knowledge. So if they had a teacher, they just shouldn't put anybody with somebody teaching on phonics. So they took teachers who were very skilled in teaching phonics and put them with kids that needed the basic level of phonics. They took teachers who were very skilled in math and math concepts and put those with kids who really needed conceptual knowledge of math. So they really, they grouped their teachers but with the and put them with the kids based on their skill base. Um, they made a shift, a big shift in special education. Miss Meredith, if you want to chime in, uh, Miss Meredith and I meet with Miss Gregory, Miss Rushing, and the two special education teachers there on a weekly basis. It is weekly, two different two weeks. It's weekly. It's weekly. Yeah, yeah it's weekly. Uh, we meet with them, and our goal has been to. Um, have our SPED teachers teaching the content um, and not just doing tests, you know, and makeup work, which has been typical of your content mastery centers. So they're actually teaching the tier one curriculums in their special education classrooms. And um, her two ladies are amazing, mm -hmm. I have to say. Um, and so, she says, we have some very talented and capable teachers that are shifting to teaching lessons on accommodated levels and front-loading students for their own level lessons to be more successful in their regular education classroom. So they're making a huge shift with their special education population, which is that super subgroup that we talked about and those progress points that we talked about that we're aiming to get. And Kim, I think we discussed, uh, even though we know that you're, on, you're at the fourth and fifth grade level, those two grades will be tested. You guys are putting whatever measures in place uh, to make sure that it's not a problem, not an issue, whatever manpower we need. You, you guys have open lines of communication with the superintendent, directors, or whatever. So, again, the goal is to make sure that everybody is aware that we're doing what we need to do based on the situation where we're at. And I, I kind of feel bad that you're at this meeting now because I asked you guys to come and you had a root canal because I wouldn't be here. So please don't hold that against me. That speaks to her dedication. Yeah. <laughs> but I have to say too, and give a shout out to Miss Greeria because she's even going in and helping with one of those accelerate groups because there's so many, um, there's so many kids who need so many different things. And so it's literally, Everybody on her faculty is pitching in, and uh, mm -hmm. everybody. Okay. Do you have? I don't think I'm going to take as long as they am. Thank you, Dawn. I don't want to get up and talk that much. Um, I will say that I'm super proud of the progress that we've made in my school the last few years, um, and I'm also proud of some of the things that we've been doing and we've been sharing with the other schools as well on some of the things that we've been focusing on through ANET. Um, we've actually been partnered with ANET two years before the other schools um, got involved. So we're in a little bit of a different place. And so as we're still learning, 
we are sharing with them to say, hey, we just learned this and it's working for us, so I want to share that. So last year we took a big shift because we wanted to see how we could move our super subgroup kids and get them to where they need to be. So what we did was we called it Priority Students, Focus Students. And what we did is we had the teachers in, all, in every class, it didn't matter if you were a core subject or you were an elective, we had you bring in work and we discussed each, each child and how, and what their progress was each week. And it wasn't anything specific, but it would be um, like one of our students, uh, one of our math teachers, she came from another district. She brought in the <coughs> achievement level descriptors that we've kind of been talking about. And we started putting that in place. And so as we're bringing work in with these kids, we were noticing that some of the kids were saying, well, I have, I'm doing mastery work because this is solving a real world problem. And so when we would see them in the hall, we would say, hey, I saw your math work and that you're working at mastery level, you're gonna get there because they were a basic student. And so building relationships with kids is really big with me. Um, I want the kids to feel valued. I want my teachers to feel valued and that's something that I, I pretty much spoil them, but I want them to feel like they belong. And so one of the things that we really work on is building those relationships. Well, with building those relationships, you have to get teenagers to talk to you and to communicate with you and how to build um, their growth through their learning. So this year, we were, were being very intentional about the work that we bring. So whenever, I think it was Mr. Randy or Mr. Bo just asked about how are we t uh, testing to the test, what we do is we're looking at, for example, in science, 20% of the science leap test is writing. So when I meet with our teachers during common planning, I'll say, okay, how can we get students writing the same way in cross-curricular and we're supporting each other to build these kids up? So one of the things that we're doing is each month I talk to the teachers and my uh, leadership team and I say, okay, what can we work on? What is the biggest need? And how can we get these kids to grow? So one of the things is like in ELA, they're working on uh, short writing responses. In science, they're doing extended responses. Um, and they're all doing the same way that they're writing so that we're all helping each other. I had um, Coach Barton actually came and said, I'm having trouble with kids knowing suffix and prefix. And I said, I'll get with the ELA teachers. So when the ELA teachers came in yesterday, I said, I need you to help science with prefixes and suffixes. And so we try to help each other and we try to build each other up that way. But I'm really seeing a lot of growth yesterday. It was, it was so heartwarming for me to see the teachers really saying, I'm, I'm really seeing growth with these kids, our priority students and our growth to mastery. So what I found through, I'm kind of a data person as well. Um, what I found whenever me and Courtney were kind of going through test scores was that our growth to mastery kids, which are 10 or less points away, we were leaving 2,000 points on the table. So that is our priority right now, is our priority students, which are our super subgroup uh, students, but our growth to mastery as well. And so our teachers are communicating with the student and they will be com uh, communicating with the parents saying, your child is on my radar to be, a, they're a target student. I'm going to get them to mastery. I need your support in helping me get there. there. Um, so we're pretty excited about the work that we're doing and I'm feeling really good about the progress because I'm seeing it. I have really good people in place. Um, we're good, we have a great foundation of teachers and we have a great foundation of kids. I've, this is one of the best things. One of the major things though I will say at the end is the social emotional. I deal with kids that are going through changes in their life. Their brains are actually growing more than when they were born and so a lot of things happen you know they're emotional they are you know they want to get frustrations out so one of the things it, that we're working on is MTSS works with ELA but they also have a behavioral um, concept of it and I had two of my teachers um, 
go to common planning and discuss restorative practices and really looking into what can we do for students to kind of keep them in class as much as possible and help them grow as a, as a person and, and get some of these behaviors out of the way and break these barriers. And I've seen so much growth with that already. So I'm super excited about that um, and partnering with them and just getting some support there uh, with them. And some of them are receiving outside counseling through the program, through the special education program. Um, and then we do our habitudes every month during club schedules. So we're trying to help mold them to be young adults and be ready to go when they get to high school. So. Did I take that long? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I got on a rant. <laughs> you went over two minutes. Wrap up. Katie, you spoke with all that confidence. I say fast too. That, no, that's so. good. <laughs> that is just a big difference between yesterday and today, and that's that's real good. Yeah. I'm gonna get you this week. Ditto to all the things. Like everybody, you know, I'm proud of everybody. Everybody has done such a good job on their action plans. So at the high school, uh, we're focusing on our EOC classes because not every one of our classes take EOCs. So it's our English one, English two, geometry. Um, world History, um, Algebra One, or um, our EOC classes. So last year, AMET worked with um, the teachers in our math department, and when they did that with Mr. Amos' um, in support, they made um, a five-point gain in Algebra One and almost three points in Geometry um, with that team of people. So uh, because our English LEAP scores went down last year, our focus this year is on instructional support with the English department. So um, Mr. Amos and with ADENT is working with our English teachers to help them with strategies to help them improve uh, reading comprehension and writing. Um, we want the students also, like everybody has their target priorities to this, we want the students to be aware, I think Ms. McCann said that, on what level they're performing at. So if a kid knows they're at, or well, my writing is basic writing, um, well, if you're looking at student work in our common planning, if you're looking at those things, how can I get from if I'm a basic writer, how do I move up to the more advanced writer? So that's what we're going to do. Kids to realize what they are, not just the teachers to know, but for the kids to realize themselves, oh, okay, so if I just do this, then, then I will be a better writer or a better math or whatever it is. So, um, we just like all the other people just trying to be intentional on the students we're focusing on and um, what classes that we're uh, trying to support um, with our leadership team and uh, with AMET um, coming in. So. And hopefully the support with the writing in English will carry over to the biology because they have to write on the biology test and the U.S. history. history. Yeah. And, and the math. All connected. And, and Charlie, the, Charlie the, the rate, Charlie's going to introduce that to CTE so that when they write in CTE, they're also using the same. The same. Yes. So it's across the board. Like board that has trying to connect way. all the classes together where they're working on the same thing and not everybody's working to do the same thing but independently. So they're all kind of working. Um, to do the same things, uh, so we're not going to fight with these things. Thank you. Sweet. <laughs> Everybody else has already spoken and said all the good things. Good I'm going to share all the good things. All right. Our major is a financial update. Just listen under, under G1, I, I was looking at the uh, agenda wrong for some reason. Could be H, but anyway. Under G1, there's a brief, brief summary of all the funds that are the main board that we cover every time. Uh, general fund, if you look down to the last paragraph under general fund, that's a kind of a brief summary. Uh, currently, uh, through November of 23, we have a four hundred ten thousand dollar negative balance uh, as compared to last year's thirty-three thousand dollar deficit, and there's two big reasons for that. Uh, this year we've already paid for two hundred fifty thousand dollars of buses as of this time this year, whereas last year we paid one bus in December, we paid one bus in January. So that, that's a little bit of a time of difference. And then we, have, we have another hundred seventy thousand dollars worth of insurance. That's the timer. We have a hundred seventy thousand dollar increase on the insurance that I've been to death. So anyway, those are the two big line items that account for why there's such a big difference. Uh, sales tax is down about five thousand dollars from last year on revenue. It's 
expenditures are up to about 11,000. That goes along with our normal annual step increases we have every year. So no big deal there. Uh, lunch is ahead by about 33,000 from last year. And that's a true net number. Uh, maintenance fund is about $50,000 ahead as compared to last year. But James did tell me that I have a roof leak at one of the schools. I don't remember which one. So I, I don't know if that number is going to be in jeopardy. Uh, and that's all on those first five pages. And then we turn to G2. Uh, that's a uh, summary of the balance sheet for each month since June of 2003, 2023. And that just shows you how much cash we've got in the bank. The receivables, uh, you know, total assets, total liabilities, and where we're all next. Uh, so I know Bo asked a lot of, about cash, how much money we got. We got seven and a half million dollars. Right so uh, we're all good here. Then the last page is a um, quarterly uh, recap of each fund, and I'm required to give that to y'all twice a year. Probably give it every quarter, and it's just a status on the current funds as. Uh, as to the revenues and expenditures and fund balance. So that's all I got. I'll be happy to entertain any questions we're going to do definitely. Any questions? Thank you, Dave. Okay. All right, district leaders update. Um, Rhonda Whitten and Cynthia Clark and I yesterday went to Baton Rouge and um, met with the four other districts that uh, had the Family Engagement Leadership Grants. So we all gave our presentations um, for what we had done. So we got to see what other districts had done with their money and so it was, it was good to get a lot of good ideas and everybody, you know, sharing. Um, we do have the possibility of um, more money uh, after January, so if we do, we'll continue those efforts. Um, Sean Brown, who um, came back at the beginning of this of the family grant that um, met with all the families, is coming in January for um, to work with the teachers on their class and safety, safety and supervision. So he's a really engaging, fun person. Um, he'll be in on a Monday to do that with him. Uh, we got our performance profiles, it's same as their SPS. So. Uh, Kelly is at 5.99, which is high proficient. They are a tenth of a point from being excellent. Mm -hmm. um, they had really great growth. Um, the pre-K is 5.89. They're a little behind them. They're still high proficient. The daycare, 5.09, which is proficient. So that all rounds out. So our um, district's performance profile is a 5, so it's, it's, a, it's high proficient, which would be equal to a P, if you put a vote that. So um, we're continuing to enroll, um, lots of kids coming in. We're excited to, to still have that. And everything these ladies have said about the relationships and the things that, when Katie was talking about that with the kids, there's so many parents that you have trouble building relationships with. And I think all the work they do with these kids, building the relationships is gonna help with their parents mm -hmm. because they're gonna leave there with that good feeling. Um, and that was a commonality in everything we heard yesterday from all these districts that if you didn't have relationships with your families, you weren't going to get them in and you weren't going to have that engagement. So I think that all the work they're doing and that, you know, that they already do with our Head Start pre-K program, it's just going to continue to move through and um, help everything to grow. Oh, okay. Uh, we, um... Well, we're working on the probability report. Got it done. Deadline to turn that in is uh, will be the 18th next week. So it's submitted to you. You check out the insurances and we send it over to Abby Rich. And basically, the probability report, we have to make sure that all Title ones and non Title one schools are comfortable as far as salaries that I get from David and staff. And um, so they are. If not, we have to swap some around to make those changes because that's one of the three main components of the uh, programs. Um, and also today we had our uh, district uh, parent advisory council meeting uh, and it was real successful. We had a good turnout. We had special guests. Uh, we're not board members. 
uh, was invited by superintendent and uh, we were so glad to have him there. We yeah. didn't invite any of the rest of you too. He just happened to be with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I said, come on, Miss Molly's feeding us. <laughs> yeah, he got a free meal, you know. And um, we had our speakers today were um, the sheriff, uh, of course, Clay Bennett, and the uh, chief deputy, Jack McKinnon. And he did a very good presentation. He gave us some valuable information about things that goes on in the parish. I didn't know, you know, that went on. Uh, but anyway, um, uh, it was very successful, and of course we had all our uh, trustee uh, folk here, they were there, you know. We have a real good team, we're close-knit uh, group, and we have, and we're connected. Uh, my voice is running away. <laughs> and um, so uh, we, um, yeah, they are. They are very good leaders, good, good leaders. And I'm so glad that, you know, we have that kind of relationship that we can um, uh, share and, and, and collaborate. And, uh, I mean, it is gone. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good stop. <laughs> uh, but anyway, I appreciate um, you all being in attendance today. But uh, that's what basically what we're going to do today. Mike? Uh, we weren't here last week, neither uh, last month, neither me nor Brian. We went to an Arkansas Technology Conference. Uh, this is the second year I've been to that, and really this conference is geared towards IT professionals in education, and thankfully we were able to go. Uh, we learned a whole lot about protecting our network. Uh, last week we got wind that uh, a state department entity and a school system were compromised. Uh, immediately, Brian and myself dove into our network, started looking at all the traffic. Um, we haven't seen anything uh, alarming on our end, uh, but we haven't received the indicators of compromise from that school district yet. Um, but I think we're going to be we're going to be safe. Um, we did have some issues this week, but that's all been kind of rectified. Uh, the, the other thing is uh, the high school has had the opportunity to pilot a new, I don't want to say security program, but it's a check-in system at the high school mm -hmm. where uh, individuals are required to show their ID. Uh, it's primarily geared towards visitors on campus. So anyone who's not part of the school system, who doesn't have a student in the school system, who works for a company, maybe the uh, vending machine uh, operator, the coke man, uh, whoever comes into campus, it makes them scan their ID, sign in, we get a picture, it checks against federal uh, databases for uh, sex offenders, for uh, people who should not be on our campus interacting with our students. Um, so it's so far it's done really well. I think uh, Ms. Garcia can, can testify that the front office has gotten a lot more comfortable with using it. We've worked out the bugs. Um, we get a text message. Those that are uh, on this get a text message to say this individual's on campus. So even if they're off, uh, the principal's not there, they see who's on their campus and they know who's there. That's, cool. um, that's a nice it, feature. It, I did not, that's nice. Yeah, it prints off the badge, um, <coughs> prints off a badge for them. So when they're walking around campus, it has their name, their picture. Uh, if we set it up who they're there to be with, it'll have that person's name. Um, parents come in, when they come in, we're not checking against any databases. We're just looking at that parent. They show their ID to say who they say they really are and that they have the right to check that student out. Um, then they go to the office and the office can see, yeah, this person's here, they're eligible to check that student out and they go. So it's it's just another line of uh, security for our students as they check in. So, and Mike, for the record, there's nobody being recorded uh, unless there's reason that a recording needs to take place. But from an official standpoint, visiting the school, teachers talking, talking about their principal or whatever, that's not being recorded to use against them, right? Because Correct. some people had concern. So Correct. I want to make sure that in it misunderstanding is being told so we won't have to go through all this 
And when you guys finish with the pilot program, uh, Melinda, Randy, and I will look at it to see what we need to add, take away, or whatever, because I had a chance to experience it after uh, Mr. Barton called me and told me about it. Nick had uh, set up the meeting. I came, uh, I think that day, <coughs> one of the individuals had something that came up as a flag, the Coca-Cola guy. Uh, yeah. Mike was able to jump, well, that was a, uh, like indecent exposure, something to that effect. Yeah. But uh, he was able to pick it up, but it wasn't that, that person. Right. So you may right. want to elaborate more to me, but so, I think it's something that's good. Right. It, it does show if anyone similar to that has come up in case there's kind of a question. Um, anyone who's in there as an administrator, the principal, the secretaries can look at that and see that that arrest record for that person and their picture ID. And if it does not match, we clear that person. <coughs> the next time they come in, we don't have to do that. We've already cleared that individual off their driver's That's license fantasy. and they're good to go. So, you, use, you use the word primarily for. When you say primarily used for, that's confusing. Okay. So what I mean by that is, are we using it on everybody or are we not using it on everybody? If, if I come in, are they gonna take my ID and or, or Johnny off the street or just somebody that you don't know? How does that how does that work? So as a state standard, we should be showing IDs to come in to that right. building to say who we are. Right. Okay. Um if you are who you say you are, you scan into that, you're you're good to go. So um, what do you do with, with Mr. Smith, who's 72 and doesn't have a driver's license, or how does he? What does he have to do with a state ID? Or tell me, tell me. If if it, if he has a state ID with him, he's allowed to check in. If he is just a parent there to check a student out, they can still go to the window and say, "I'm here to check out X Y Z student." They still get them in. This is just another way for us to keep a record. So a parent who's can in check there. out a student without an ID. Yep. Okay. We're, we're trying to move away well, from that. Student Wait, they have to be yeah. on the student demographic. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Right. But they, they just the, check the, out your office anybody. personnel pretty much know mm -hmm. yeah. who can check the out. The badges yeah. are printed off if you're a leave, you're going in visitor. the school. Visiting. Yeah, if you're visiting, right. you're going to be in the school, not just the checkout. So right. We're, we're, we're trying to get everyone all the parents yeah, on you would, board. You would present your ID, it would print you, just like with St. Francis, St. when you go to visit, they all print the a little badge for you. All yeah, the center, they all do. Yeah. 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 Yeah, but back to what Mr. Glass asked uh, about recording. When you come through those gates at the high school, or do you not be recorded right then? We have cameras live all over every So campus. you have cameras everywhere that, that are recording every single thing there? It's kept for 30 days in, in the cloud. Okay. Right, but you're not recording that conversation. No. Yeah, well, I mean that's just like a home camera. It is recorded. No, no. Well, it if, has if, audio capability, right. but the there's not someone who's. Well, my home, my, yeah. my, my home cameras have that capability. What I'm saying is, based on what you asked me, I want to make sure that a teacher is not being recorded when they're standing next to the camera. Uh, feel like they can't say what they want to say, but they can be recorded. But it's not being used against them. Mm -hmm. Correct. I mean, there shouldn't be any reason to, but no. but. But I mean, no John, one has time to sit. Me and Nikki can stand outside the gym and talk, and it's being recorded. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and there are signs recorded. everywhere that tell you you're being yeah, recorded. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there are surveillance cameras everywhere. And, and honestly, and we have been for three years now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, we, but we don't have, but we don't record in the classroom. No. No. Yeah. Will um, any of our other uh, schools be getting this in the future? That's why we're looking to see what the cost effectiveness of this is going to be. It, it works with our camera system. It's a, another part of that camera system. Um, it would be nice for every every school to have this. This is another security feature. There is, um, I haven't got well, I that yet. Know, yeah. yeah, but there is so a the cost. the rest of our system. schools have the recording ability oh. already. <laughs> Every, so every this school is just has an add on to it. We like to get the software update. Correct. Mm -hmm. Correct. Is this the same program that we've seen before where like if the kids are at a Friday night football game, you know, where your kids is on the bus, this program does that same thing, it tells you where your kid is? No. No, it's, no, it's not program. not tracking students. This is just a check in called guest. Just a check in to the school to make sure you say who you are. 
Does any other director have anything? I know we, we hit a lot on I do. I, I wanted to give a shout out to our junior high robotics team. Uh, oh, yeah. They're probably less than a year old and they went uh, this past weekend or weekend before last to Shreveport and won their regional competition and qualified for the state competition January, January 27th in Baton Rouge? New Orleans. New Orleans. Sorry, New Orleans. New Orleans. So, I mean, for them just to be in their infancy and to perform like that, Miss uh, Casey Potno, who's their sponsor, puts in a lot of work with them and I believe they're coming to the January board meeting hopefully yeah. to do a presentation yeah. of their project. What they need for state is to have presented this and it's, it's under five minutes so they're going to come and actually show you what they what they do and talk about it. So when they go to state and the question is asked have you presented this they'll be able to say yes we presented it to our board. So is it that those high school students? Junior, Junior high school students. Uh, Hatch. Hatch. Oh yes. Hatch. Um, Hatch. Just want to. Do y'all remember back when Hatch gave us the ten thousand dollars to to implement STEM programs? This is part of that. Yes, this is part of the work that we did at the junior high and the high school. So. Okay, do you, do you have room at your school where we can take the board meeting there so these parents can come and see uh, those individuals and yada yada yada? You, you would prefer us to just do it here. For that? Yeah. Oh yeah, and you know what? I have a new sound system in our gym. We can use the, <laughs> the uh, microphone for that. Yeah, I mean, we're super excited because there was two parts to it. Um, one part was they had to come up with a solution and they had to create something but, and take it with them. The other part was they created it um, there and then presented it and so um, we're super excited because we weren't really sure how it was going to work because it was our first time um, but they really showed out so we're super excited and if any businesses want to donate <laughs> to the funding of their trip because they are brand new it's it's and it's very costly to go stay in new orleans for two days um to compete but we're super excited it's at um the jesuit uh it's two lanes actually putting it on okay. mm -hmm. so jesuit high school well, mr council before i get outside the protocol you're the president as of now you have an objection to the meeting being moved there uh, for the purposes of does any board member have an objection I, I just think when kids are doing stuff again if it's negative everybody know about it when it's something that's positive, only a few people know about. I just think those kids who are going to be performing, it's only appropriate that their parents be able to see the governing body along with those kids doing what they're supposed to do. Because I don't know anything about it, but I, I like for the parents to be able to know about it. They'll be on their home field. Right. Yeah, that'd be great. Thanks. Hey, good. speaking of kids, I went by the school Monday, and Jacob was playing some grass and stuff up there. And on the way out, I saw. Uh, bunch of cars there so I got out of my truck and walked in and there was probably Miss Garcia there's probably 30 kids in there on the floor wrapping presents uh, student council kids uh, the National, Honor Society. National Honor Society kids just yes. wrapping pleasant yeah, presents um, this, for people um, all Shaw over had asked us they always do their big um, fundraiser it's what they raise up the money for for National Honor Society is to support the community with kids that need a, well families because it's not just kids, and they take a day and they go shopping, and um, they each have a family, and they buy all the things. And she asked this year, she said, if they could have a wrapping party mm -hmm. in the fine arts building instead of taking the, you know, yeah. a class instructor had to do that. And I thought that's an awesome idea. Mm -hmm. So they deserve that. So they spent their Monday wrapping the presents. I've been asked to so say it. that um, Homeland um, has already offered to help with sponsorships. So <laughs> since yeah. we have some <laughs> other <laughs> rain <laughs> <rain laughs> <rain laughs> here tonight, if anybody <laughs> else wants to come on the podium, Homeland, Homeland's ready to. Uh, I'm ready to make this happen. Call me out. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Richard to just calm down. <laughs> 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 yeah, <that's it. laughs> we, we'll take care of it. We'll no, take care of it. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Nick, I had invited those uh, football players for all district. Okay. You know, uh, right now, I think your son messaged me and said that somehow they wouldn't able to you know, be here. But in spite of everything that's bad, I wanted to be able to acknowledge those kids for their performance. Oh, yeah. uh, they're not here tonight, so maybe in January, football, you can come and you know, maybe have those guys uh, to come here. And well, it, well, it'll be appropriate because they'll be at the junior high, so it'll be uh, you know easy to gym or whatever you know basketball. I don't know if they'll be finished, but probably not. But the football players, I think they did 
uh, real good based on the circumstances that we were put in, uh, you know, with regards to a coach. So uh, hats off to them. I didn't make it to any game. Uh, I don't have to be that as a supporter. But uh, I just think those kids need and deserve recognition. Mm -hmm. Uh, Along with the, the band, coaches. Um, the band yeah. did good this year. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Well, we just so many good things going on. <laughs> so we do. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Um, today is a superintendent's report. All right. So I'm very minimal. Um, just want to remind everybody that we do dismiss at noon next Wednesday for our Christmas holiday, and then we will be back in class on January the 4th. Uh, Ralph stole my thunder on the robotics team. Um, <laughs> and so the only thing else I have here is I want to give each of you a, um, we talked about you, I want you to feel like you are welcome in our schools. And so one of the things that we talked about today was they would love to have you come and, and or call, I, so I put their phone numbers, their cell phone numbers and their email addresses and I put a little place out here for you to schedule a visit. Please call them and schedule a visit to just walk and talk through the school so that they can show you all of the things that they just talked about and so much more because they, they could talk for mm -hmm. And so I just wanted you to have that information. I just encourage you when we get not not tomorrow. But just call them and let them know, hey, I, I would love to come and, and, and visit with you and, and take a tour of the school and, and see what's going on in the classrooms so that you're um you know what wonderful things they're doing. So that's that's all I have. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm so sorry. Uh, just to piggyback on her real quick. I put at the back of your packet the information for the convention. They've already released a tentative um, agenda that I did attach also. As it gets closer, they'll put a more in-depth one out. But if you want to attend, it's Sunday, March 10th through Tuesday, March 12th in Baton Rouge at the Crown Plaza. I will just need to register you all and book your hotels. So let me know if I heard from you if you want to go. Okay. And you can email me, text me. I will get you registered and do all of that. Um, that is all. Today. All right. You got any more comments? Yeah. Merry Christmas, everybody. Nick, I'm still your thunder because you didn't do it. Uh, I think we had some issues with uh, people, teachers feeling like they didn't have uh, the appropriate way to give the input. Uh, so the superintendent, they, I think you guys need to look at this. It's 15 pages, and uh, if there's anybody that's I don't know if I want to say it forward or say it the way that I should professionally, but at the end of the day, this survey, I think it allows everybody who may have a problem, issue, or whatever the case may be with their principal, any suggestion that they want to do, give, or whatever, it's here, it's anonymous. I think you guys are trying your best to get everybody to uh, respond. If they don't respond to it, it's nothing else that Baron is going to be able to do because they asked for this to be done. Superintendent uh, in the the name of the group, uh, what's the name of the, the board? Superintendent Teacher Advisory Council. They, they created this mm -hmm. specifically for teachers to be able to use. Mm -hmm. So if, if anybody's looking on YouTube or whatever, mm -hmm. this is something that I think everybody needs to use. If you don't like the superintendent, you don't like whatever, you have the opportunity to say this. If you want to give input, feedback, you have the opportunity to do it. Uh, Rand is very detailed. I think, again, you, got, you guys need to get with Nikki mm -hmm. to get a copy of it and look at it. I think it's very detailed. And uh, it satisfies me based on the complaints that I've had uh, in the last six months. Uh, so I'm okay with it. Uh, it's not going to satisfy everybody. And I think we're learning that, you know, some people you just have to dip them in the water and pull them back up and hope they're different. Is this the but at the end of the day, this is what we got. Yeah, well, yes. And so I'm excited. I've been watching these numbers because they, they all were shooting for 80%. Um, with the Teacher Advisory Council, they were like, oh, we did the, last year when I went over the results with them, they were like, that's terrible turnout, you know, that nobody participated. So we talked about ways to clear up the questions, make sure that they had the, you know, like, you know, questions to ask and the feedback. And so we set a goal, they set a goal of 80%, and I am proud to say that today we have 80% at every school. Can't ask for the best. That's right. And so everybody who um, follows the directions by the end of the survey, has directions to email their principal with some certain information and so their name goes into a drawing for a hundred dollar Amazon card that they will be able to use in their classroom. 
So um, all seven schools will have a drawing. So approved by David. <laughs> um, so uh, that. My um, home land bike, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Oh, yes. <laughs> 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 they they <laughs> me. <laughs> but like literally, they were. Call, I've been sending them presentations, and today they were like texting teachers, and emailing teachers. Have you filled out the survey? Have you done the survey? You know, we really want to know, and we. I can't wait to get those results back so I can share them with our school leadership teams, and they can really see. Are we missing the mark? Are we hitting the mark? What are the concerns? And then they can work to try to let teachers know their voices are heard and how we can work together to fix the issues that we have and where we can celebrate and just hopefully continue to build that trust between our administration and our teachers. So, um, can I add to that? As, as an administrator, if you got more than 50% of your faculty happy with the job you do, mm -hmm. you done done something. Mm -hmm. Keep so, that keep that number in mind for when you get the results. <laughs> if they, I mean, it's just the way it is. It's just the way it is. I'm excited. Don't take that person. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's just the way it is. You're at the top. Keep that, keep keep that 50% at the yeah. yeah. So, all right. So, thank you, Karen, for bringing that. I did forget about that. So, yeah. And I will share those results with you whenever we get those all disaggregated. So I just want to make sure that the principals have them and they can deal with it. And then the advisory council will, and they'll go over with their faculties and stuff too. So, so thank you. Did I hear a motion we adjourn? <laughs>